Hey, it's Jeff Green, Green Financial Group. Thanks for tuning in to the video blog today. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the recovery, some high-frequency data, and inflation. Stick around. We'll be right back. So when we talk about the recovery, we look at, I like to look at anyway, uh, what we call high frequency data. This is weekly data that comes out and look at the, look at the graph that's on your, your page of the chart. And certainly you can see jobless claims, um, you know, retail sales, um, these kind of things. But we'll look at some of the more, more fun things for just a minute. Uh, Cause we are always too serious on this, these videos, I think. But anyway, to lighten it up, a little bit anyway, look at box office receipts. Uh, you look at the level today, and this is as a, you know, box office receipts ending week, June 10, uh, 95 million bucks or in change, right? Versus the 2019 level. Now we look at the 2019 level because no one was going to the movies in 2020, right? So now we have to go back to 19 to compare. So, and when we do, by the way, in 2020, I looked at this data as well. And there was literally like, I don't know, in, in like uh, the summer of, of 2020, there was like $5,000 or so, I remember, in box office receipts. And then I'm thinking, who are these people going to the movies? I, I, I knew of no theaters that were open. How were these people going to the movies and why was there $5,000 in box office receipts? I don't know. Anyway, but you compare that now to the 2019 level. You have two hundred and forty-one million dollars uh, versus ninety-five million uh, today. So you know it's it's can still considerably down, but we are on the right track. Rail car traffic, I think, is a, an important one. Uh, that level is improving significantly. Steel production, hotel occupancy, we are at sixty-one point nine percent versus seventy-one point eight percent in 2019 and even then i think that was a little low even in 19. then we look at the tsa checkpoint data and this is always an interesting one to me um the tsa checkpoint data and the commercial flight so if you look at the tsa checkpoint data as of june 13th weekend in june 13th you had 1.85 million people pass through a tsa checkpoint versus the 2019 level at the same time of 2.56 million people that pass through a TSA checkpoint. So again, uh, it's off 27.8%, but improving significantly. And commercial flights likely, you know, about the same, uh, down 30.7%, but 84,000 commercial flights uh, week ending June 14th uh, versus the 2019 level of 121,000 and change in 2019. Now, if you go back to commercial flights, people in my family, my boys, are going to um, Cancun here soon. And the flights for each of them was $900. Now, I think this is for a couple of reasons. A, everybody's going to Mexico. It's one of those places that's open. Um, you know, the economies are open. Uh, you know, I think the ma mask mandates are pretty light, uh, if existent at all. And people are, are heading there. There are a lot of people going there. They're going to Florida. They've jacked the prices up to some degree. But you've also seen a significant increase in the price of oil. Oil is around the $70 range right now. So, you know, that's, that's inflation. Inflation, uh, by the way, is here to stay. And we are under the classic scenario for inflation. This is... It, You've got, you, we shut down an entire economy, we shut down a, really a world economy, but let's just focus on the United States economy. We have an, an incredibly complex economy. You can't just shut it down and expect to turn it back on like a light switch. It doesn't work that way, not, not at all. And uh, you hear a lot about supply chain disruptions. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means you can't, the economy just doesn't come right back on. It takes time for these supply chains and goods and services. Rental cars, for example, they sold, the rental companies rented no cars uh, during 2020, right? There's no travel, nobody, nobody did anything, so you didn't, they didn't need their cars, so they got rid of their cars. It was the only thing they could do to stay in business. Well, now there's a huge demand for rental cars, and guess what? You can't get a rental car right now, and if you do, you are going to pay very exorbitant prices in that. Um, 
And the reason you are is because they can't replace the cars fast enough because they're not online in production fast enough to get things going. Meanwhile, you have the federal government that has literally just handed us trillions of dollars right directly to the consumer. So the classic setup for inflation, it, this is Economics 101, folks. Uh, you've got too many dollars chasing too few goods. And when you have that scenario, then inflation is inevitable. The price of lumber up 700%. The average home being built today is the, the cost added to the average home being built is about $37,000 just because of the price of lumber. You've got to haul lumber uh, in a Brinks armored truck to get it to where you're going. It's that valuable. So my point is simply this. Inflation is here to stay. And it's here to stay for a while. The Fed has committed to keeping rates low or where they are basically until 2023. That's the tool, one of the tools they have to combat inflation, by the way, is by raising rates. And when they do, I think they're going to be under a lot of pressure come 2022 to raise some rates because it's going to, they're going to be hard pressed. Inflation's coming. It's not going to be hyper runaway inflation. I don't want to scare anybody, but you're going to see, you know, four and a half percent inflation or so. So you've got to be careful about inflation and where it's, you know, where it's heading. Know that it's there. Know that it's here to stay. And it's not going anywhere for a while. And the Fed's going to come under pressure to, to, to get that done. They've committed to 2023. I think 2022 is going to be, you know, a, a tough year for them not to raise rates. And by the way, like anything else the Fed does, it will overdo it. They will, they will raise rates too fast and too far. And guess what that's going to bring? Recession. If you didn't guess recession... <laughs> That's what it's going to bring. At some point, we have to worry about a recession. Not right now. I don't want to concern anybody. I think 2021, you got my opinion. You, It's a good setup for rising stock values. I think the markets, the economy, everything looks good for 2021. Um, go to taxes for just a minute. We'll talk about taxes, I think, in the next video. But I think you're not going to see taxes get raised during 2021. I think that's a safe bet. 2022, I think, could also be a pretty safe bet for not raising taxes simply because it's an election year. And, you know, raising taxes doesn't go well for politicians who choose to raise taxes during election years. It usually does not end well for them. So I think you have a case to say that we may not see higher taxes even in 2022. But, well, that remains to be seen. But back to inflation, back to recovery. Recovery is going well. We're going to continue our recovery. That's going to continue, I think, into 2022 as well. I don't think you really need to worry about recessions or slowing downs of economy until 2023. Again, that's my opinion. I am entitled to change that opinion, by the way, if the circumstances change. But as of right now, things look good. They'll remain good. Inflation's here. It's going to stay. Not hyperinflation. About 4.5%, I think, on the high side maybe five, but we'll see how that goes as well. So thanks for turning the video blog today. Remember any questions, concerns, or comments, don't be afraid to reach out to us. Let us know any other content you want to hear on these videos. Please let us know. Remember, stay the course.